listening to the Cubecast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cubecast. We're here with Tom, myself, and Ty. Hey, Ty, thank you. Yeah, so Ty's a Winnipeg local, for Ooh. everyone that doesn't know. Um, oh. oh, and he disappeared. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so Ty, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> and you guys? Good, good. Pretty well. Um, I, I mean, a quick follow-up with that. How, how are you doing? You're recovering <laughs> from uh, surgery right now. So how's yeah. that going? I say I'm good, like I mean, like emotionally I'm good, but physically, yeah, it's really rough right now. I got a <laughs> surgery I had on uh, May 6th, so it's been like three weeks, and I'm in crutches right now, and I can't train parkour, and the recovery time to be training actual full parkour again is like nine months, so that's kind of really heavy and hard on me, but I'm still trying to, like, I'm doing the physio exercises, I'm recovering really well, so hopefully I'll get in a little bit before that, but yeah. I think you'll be pretty surprised by how fast that time will go by. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He'll be, he'll so be like, you know what? Exactly, an active, healthy young kid. I think I'll, I think I'll be able to get through it pretty quick. Uh, so, do you know what actually caused the injury? Yeah. Okay. So this, not this summer, but like the summer of last year, like 2021, I was actually filming a parkour video with Zach for our YouTube channel. Link in yep. the description. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then um, I was doing a side flip off of like a gym roof of a school onto another like roof of a school. <clears throat> so I did this like eight foot drop in the side flip and I landed funny and my knee dislocated yeah. and then popped back in, which was terrible because we were also on the roof of the school. But uh-huh. We didn't want to get in trouble for being on the roof. So Zach and I just had to like throw my, my body down and like we had to like maneuver my body so that we didn't have to like call my normal one to be like yo we got like an injury it's like no so we did that and then we didn't even go straight to the hospital we went to like get a chocolate milkshake from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> totally casual but yes. yeah so um i was told about that i had dislocated my leg <clears throat> and that i should like book for an mri but mris are so backed up that like we booked it right then and it was seven months later that I'd actually injured myself a couple times minorly after that because I kept thinking, oh, things are better. And then I hurt myself again. But then finally, when we got the MRI and then went to see a surgeon, we found out that when I initially had that injury, my meniscus actually flipped upside down. So I had what's called bucket handle meniscus. So I could never, I could straight my leg. Like my leg had, hasn't right. been straight for seven months. So that's why even right now, I can't straighten it fully because it just, it's not comfortable. I'm not used to it. My body doesn't stretch that movement and then I had also torn my ACL so that's actually the thing that keeps your knee from like going forward and back that was torn so the surgery was they got everything fixed but it's it's a big surgery that that's what they say is like it's one of the bigger ones to happen so yeah so your meniscus laid out good yeah your ACL is recovering yep wow all from a side flip hey Exactly. It's just like I know side flips. It's not like I was doing like a double back flip off of a twenty edge cliff, you know. Yeah. No, it's something so simple. But this is where we have to get our every podcast mention in of knees over toes, hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta get once you're once you're recovered enough. For knees over toes. Yeah. Listen, I was uh, I was doing it all the time over the winter, over the summer last year, and uh, I just recently moved, and I haven't been doing these other toes. And I know I should be walking backwards, but I'm not. And guess what? My knees are bothering me now. Oh no! <laughs> Dummy over here is just like, oh, you know what to do? Do I do it? No. Like I mean, like. So I, I'm trying to implement it a little bit at work, you know, try to do what I can there, you know. So mm-hmm. even though I should be getting into a routine because I know in the long run. Yeah, it really does. It really does help just doing those little simple basic exercises. You know, like really? Make all the difference. Have you checked them out? Have you checked uh, Ben Patrick out, Knees Over Toes? Knees, the Knees Over Toes guy? 
Yeah. 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 Cody actually. Cody was explaining that before he moved, like um, when I initially had my injury, I started working at Serratus Movement Center uh, here in Winnipeg, and uh, yeah, he was saying that like I want to, he wants me to recover fully so that I can train better. And he's like, yeah, there's this guy online. He showed me his Instagram, and I actually checked a bit of his stuff. And yeah, I was doing better, and it actually really did help me get that strength up. But again, it's not like you can just like twist your leg a certain way and it puts your meniscus over. So it was kind of like yeah. screwed up the whole time. But of course, of course. I was, yeah, exactly. I was still building strength in there, which is good, especially going into the surgery stronger was very, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Once you're like physically able to, once your joints can handle it again, that's, you'll definitely have to like get pretty heavy into that type of uh, training for a while. Exactly. Yeah. You want to come back like, not just how you were you want to be way stronger exactly, in that knee now exactly. yeah for sure definitely that's uh that's pretty crazy i guess on one hand at least you're still young so yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah you'll recover yeah. this will be a, a learning uh <laughs> just a, exactly you know like a I'm little 20. blip in your training history yeah, exactly yeah not like hopefully it doesn't affect me for life kind of thing because like i'm able to be that but young, I'm still growing. Like I can still kind of work off of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, honestly, this type of injury, I, I think even a lot of injuries in parkour, the longer effect is the mental impact it has yeah. on you. Like I guess it's too early for you to tell right now because you're still recovering. But yeah, yeah. You know, once you're back at those heights again, it'll be interesting to see how you react. <laughs> exactly even like doing stuff it's race. like i was starting to do stuff again but i was like man like summer i was at like my peak and now like it's like i was up here and now i was like way down here because i was just like i couldn't take height i was afraid to do flips because i was just like every time i'd done them like it would hurt so kind of like breaking those mental barriers i think will be the big thing because yeah again you might be at your physical peak but it's like you have to break all those fears over and over again and it's just like oh those like took so hard to conquer already so I think I'll, I'll definitely get back there, but it's definitely going to be a challenge. Yeah. But you definitely, over those next few months of recovery, just work out your upper body like mad, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I, was, I went to the basement today, and um, yeah, because my parents were saying, like, if you work up your upper body, it'll actually somehow help your lower body. And I'm like, okay, whatever, might as well go. So I was like, yeah, do some bench press, some, like, dumbbell curls and stuff, and some, like, dec chin uh, decline chin-ups and pull-ups and stuff and yeah honestly it felt good to actually be active for once because like the other active thing that I can do is like walk around the house with my crutches like trying to just put my foot down is an exercise in itself but actually feeling like some of that power is really nice yeah, yeah for sure just every parkour person gets that itch hey eh? you've been yeah, sitting too long you gotta do something just like, <laughs> oh, I just want to jump off <laughs> yeah yeah there's a there's another uh, aspect to that. I'll send you a link um, on Instagram, but uh, it's really fascinating. I told the uh, the youth at the place we worked at together, uh, me before you, but whatever, it doesn't matter, um, yeah, yeah. where like visually do something and you get, if not a better quality of outcome visually doing them than actually doing the work. So uh, mm -hmm. that's something I'll send you. It's, it's mind bottling. It's your mind yeah. in a bottle. Blowing up my brain. Is that like talking about like visit visualization? Okay, so up there. Yeah, so like they did it with the piano and lifting weights. One was um, someone physically two groups. One physically played the piano, and then a, a group did a, like a a visualization meditation kind of thing of doing of playing the piano of Tchaikovsky's blah blah blah, and everyone was still really a newbie at playing the piano right no one's good at anything and at the end of whatever study however long it was the people that did it by visual actually did that way better 30 percent better than people actually doing it by muscle memory they did it with working out and actually muscle density in the in the muscle and the not working out but just thinking about lifting heavy weights huh. <laughs> That's interesting. I'll see you both in like. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. You know, when you're like, I've been maybe all week thinking about a particular move you want to try, and you've just been yeah, running through yeah. in your head over and over. Then you get to the gym and try it. It's like, oh yeah, 
I, I got this. Like I've been thinking about this all week. I, 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 okay, I got it. <laughs> can't do it. Enjoy. So I. You, what was that? You can't do it. What? Ways I've tried it. I've tried so hard about thinking how to do a flyway, how to get up oh. there, pull. <laughs> Flyways. Oh, man. <laughs> the pit. Stick it. You're going to do it. You're going to get up. Da, da, da. Like, no, it never came. It's jinxed with flyways. <laughs> yeah, flyways are, flyways are crazy. Like, honestly, they're such a fun trick. I've done them a few times, but there was one oh. time I was in a class and I was doing it. And my foot clipped when I was like oh, coming wow. down and I like face planted on, onto a mat, but still not pleasant. And I had just haven't been able to break that mental barrier again, which is really <laughs> frustrating. So but, that's what we talked about. So, do you think that you'll get the, you'll have that mental break with uh, the flyway, like what you did with your knee there? Or like, or, or like side flips are going to be like, not your thing anymore well yeah no I, i'm i'm huge into side flips and stuff like that because i just feel like it's something like kind of like it's the most efficient flip people like to call it because it's like you can do stuff into it you can step out of it like back flip is kind of like okay to get yourself to your back or like front flip it's like i'm just losing a lot of momentum whereas like side flip you can actually like you can put like a bolt into it and then still like power through and then run forward like you have that momentum and it's actually like efficient so i don't yeah. think it's really like that much harder to break it and like even after my injury as soon as my my physician doctor like the main one that i went to he was actually the one that right before i talked to the surgeon he was like in six weeks you should be fine just start taking like low impact flips and stuff and like tricks and then like build yourself back up so i was doing flips like onto mats and stuff it felt amazing i was fine so i feel like the mental stuff isn't even the problem it's just like it's not that it's like, okay, I can't do this. It's just like the fear that it's like, okay, if I do this, is this going to hurt my leg? So I feel like once I have gotten that past where I'm feeling and I get the doctors, okay, then I should be able to like go at that stuff again. Because again, as soon as I had my physician doctors, okay, I was like, okay, I'm starting to do flips again. It feels great. Like blah, 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 blah. Like my head was kind of just like wrapped around this. But then it's like my surgeon was like, okay, you do this and you hurt something else. You're going to be like walking on eggshells for the rest of your life. And I was like, okay, that's very different. But <laughs> yeah, so I didn't do much after that. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun stuff. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> um, let's get back to, well, like, let's go back in time here to your starting point here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When was it that you got into parkour and what actually how did you find out what it was yeah okay so honestly it was probably like four or five years ago i remember my uncle he like got into just like the main like flips and stuff like he never got huge into it but he was kind of like i was like whoa like you can do a side flip on the ground that's so <laughs> cool but then like yeah for a while i went to like a place called sky zone again it was in winnipeg but then it shut down i think there's a few more across canada but I, I used to go there like every day. I got this pass for a year and like I was just doing all these tricks and trampoline and stuff. But I always really had that desire to do it on the ground. So like I'd learn them on the trampoline, but I was still like doing it on the ground. And people were like, that's not what this is for. You should go check this place out. So then after Sky Zone closed down, actually, Tom, you were my teacher when the yeah. first happened. <laughs> but I went to Cerritos actually then mm -hmm. and I was like mm -hmm. practicing um, stuff on the ground and stuff. Oh, Zach just texted me. <laughs> One second here. So yeah, sorry. So I was like, um tom was coaching me and then i started to like really like this and like again it was kind of like in serious when it was kind of starting up that's kind of when i started going and like tom was teaching there it was kind of more like defined parkour and then i feel like i kind of went in a way of like free wanting more so because like parkour they say like the definition is like kind of an efficient way of moving to like from point a to point b and like if someone says like chasing you it's like how do i escape getting chased or it's like okay I want to get on top of that building from here. What's the quickest way I can do that? Whereas free running is more like a way to express yourself through movement. So I like to add like flips and twists and stuff and just kind of like take an environment. And it's like, okay, people see this as a flower bed, a staircase and a bench. No, I see this as like a world playground that I just yeah. get to mess with, you know? And I just love that mentality. So <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. And then kind of, um, Kind of midway through that, um, when I started getting into free running, it was I was going to Serratus, but I was never like had that kind of friend group or like that kind of jam that was going on. Like I met you guys later on, and like Ben and I have been like getting together this year, and I met Cohen through like the parkour jams at Sage yeah, Movement. Cool. But uh, yeah, yeah, so oh yeah, Sage Movement jams this summer. Let's go um, <laughs> filming stuff there. Can't do a ton, but I'll do what I can. Um, 
but yeah, like before that, I was kind of like doing this alone, and I was kind of like, oh, it'd be so cool to have like a buddy to do this with, but like nobody does parkour. So then actually, my buddy actually introduced me to Zach, and then Zach and I just got along super well because it was like, whoa, you do parkour too? Like this is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Zach sadly can't make it on this podcast. He's going to, but I guess next time we'll have to get him to pop on. But yeah, so we started the YouTube channel together and honestly, just like parkour kind of originated getting popular on YouTube. So it's just so cool to kind of have my own platform to share with. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of when I got like hardcore. I was like, okay, parkour is my thing. Like I'm not going anywhere else. Like this is what I'm doing. So yeah. That, that's sick. That's, that's pretty awesome. So that's, that's so yeah. soft for like uh, a day in a life of parkour for time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So your YouTube channel then, um, you've done a fair like different types of videos. Hey, like some tutorials. And yeah. Yeah. So training kind of videos too. Exactly. Yeah. So in the start, I was kind of like okay, when I look, think of parkour, like, what do I want? And I was like, okay, I was learning how to do flips, so it probably wasn't the best time to do them. I, we, me and Zach, we talked about this. We want to go back and, like, make new tutorials, but I kind of started with, like, okay, here's how you do a back from the trampoline. Here's how you do a side flip on the trampoline. Like, I was teaching all this stuff, and then I did it on the ground and stuff like that. Um, our side flip tutorial, actually, from a few years back, got, like, the most views on our channel or so, but we noticed that later on when we started to make, like, our little montages or, like, training videos those got like way more attention and they were just like so much cooler, right? So we were like, okay, we've kind of <laughs> gone more in the way of that. And it's called like TNC Parkour and Vlogs. So it's like, we kind of have a vlog aspect to it, but it's mainly like our big thing that we like, we specialize in, I guess you could say is like the montages. Cause it's just, I feel like it's so much fun to just take like a whole experience of like a day and just like put it into kind of like a fun, like pow, pow, pow kind of thing. So yeah. Do you like editing or is that something uh, that you enjoy doing or you like a lot of parkour people where you just like uh doing parkour but not uh <laughs> not exactly that's why i feel like yeah zach and i make a good crew because i'm zach says i'm the star of kind of teensy z parkour because it's like we love <laughs> to do stuff together but like yeah. i'm big into like being in front of the camera not like i'm like a flashy person I'm like oh look at me i'm amazing but i'm just like i don't mind that like being Right. The camera's being like, okay, I'm pretty comfortable with the skills that I'm doing. I like to have fun. I like to kind of like move off and like make the video fun. And then Zach, he's actually like, he used to be, want to be an electrician. Now he wants to somehow get to a point where he's like a, like a photographer and videographer, like full time. So cool. he got really into videoing, like, and then yeah. that obviously kind of took off into our channel. And you can just see like our first videos, even with Zach editing, you can just see his style has changed. He's gotten way more advanced. So He's actually big into like the editing and video part. Not that I'm not, mm. and I've done some of that. Like I've done a little bit of editing myself, but I just don't have the proper software at home really. So it's really nice because I can kind of like be the action and like me and Zach talk ideas because we just like brainstorm together really well. But then it's kind of just like, okay, I got these clips. I put them in a folder on like Google Drive or something, send them to Zach. He just puts it together and he sends me something on Snapchat. He's like, Ty, you're going to love this. And I'm like, show me. He's like, no. <laughs> like, we'll post it like the day of because he loves to like see me excited about it. So right. he won't like show me until like the day that we post. And I'm just like, dude, this <laughs> you're, is awesome. He's like, I so, love it. You're watching these videos with everyone for the first time. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, I love it. It's kind of, it's funny, but it's just like, Honestly, even like if he sends me the link like the day before, he's like, Ty, you could not share this with anyone. It has to be a surprise. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Cool. I How think it's you... a good pair then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really, it's really cool. I'm like, honestly, that's, what, that's something that really derived from this is, um, I'm Zach and I, we just met, like we were two people that did parkour, right? We met from this friend. But honestly, through having a passion that we really shared together, now Zach's like one of my best friends. And I, I just think that that's so cool how parkour actually can really bring people together. Holy, I've known mm. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think I had no freaks to do this stuff that you all do. <laughs> You're all friends? Oh, yeah, I know that guy over there. You know that guy? I'm like, yeah, that's my <laughs> friend. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Solid. Yeah, that's cool, yo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the parkour community is like way, way bigger than, you know, years ago, but still mm -hmm. small enough where everyone like, it's like, that's still good enough. Like you do parkour. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, right. There's <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> not like, what? You're not on the, my community center parkour team? I hate you. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're enemies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. and you yeah, can go but, e- everywhere too. Everyone across pretty much the world is just the same type of weird parkour person. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's kind of like I love this like YouTube channel called like Team Farang, and like they're from like all over the world. Like somebody's from Finland, there's one from Australia, there's one from Germany, <laughs> one from Russia. Like they all get together, which I think is just super cool. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of cool because it's like it's not like soccer was kind of like invented in like the Americas and like it was brought around but it's kind of like okay it's known like just over here or like football is like very American thing or like this is very or uh, hockey it's very like, Canadian right so it's just like cool that parkour is just something that like it's not super popular like wherever you go but there is still people that you can see in kind of like all the different countries that do it in like a certain way so right, it's just like yeah worldwide how like it's cool how um everyone kind of has its own thing I was doing I was actually listening to a podcast this morning it's kind of like Parkour, it derived from, like, France, and, like, I knew all this stuff, like, it was kind of, like, obstacle course, like, parkour is, um, it's, like, the, the core word comes from, like, parkours, which was, like, obstacle course in French, and then it kind of, like, spread across the world, so it's, like, it became parkour in America and, like, stuff like that, but, like, in, um, in Ch- China, like, they call it, uh, parkour or something like that, I don't know, like, there's some way to say it, but it literally means, like, cool, cool running or like rad running and i was like dude that's huh. so cool like, like how it has a, yeah exactly it was like a similar meaning but it's just like they call it like cool and i was just like i know that like i joined parkour because it was cool it's <laughs> like i don't just think that's so cool how like people around the world just like join together and it's just kind of like there's this global community of people that are just like have respect for each other it's like you can do like some people are into climbing parkour, some people are into tricking parkour, some people are into free running, they're into like vaulting, stuff like that. Everyone kind of has their own thing, but they all have the respect for each other because it's just like we're all joined by this kind of movement community throughout the world. I just think that's so cool. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Hey, how some people you can both be doing parkour, but the way they do it is exactly. so completely different. Exactly. Yeah. You guys like, different. yeah, like it's you know, climbing up things and doing you know, some big uh, descent dissensions here, and all the guys like, oh, it's just like doing flips. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it's not even the same headspace of like <laughs> movement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Parkour. parkour. So, uh, with Frank, is that like one of your biggest inspirations, or are there yeah, other things that you? Yeah, it was kind of later on that I found them. It was actually called in the last, like, year, year and a half. But, um, yeah, I remember I was just looking because I was like, okay, I've watched, like, a lot of, like, minor parkour stuff because I was like, okay, I was a beginner. I was kind of like, okay, just finding some little, like, tutorials and stuff to do basic things. But then I was kind of like, okay, now let's look at the big guys because now I feel like I'm getting better at parkour. I want to take inspiration, like, see what I like out of this. And then everyone watched the store. Like, everyone is just, like, Store is the biggest parkour group out there. And I was like, okay, I want to be different. I want to find someone that's, like, not the biggest thing out there because it's, like, Store is cool. Nothing against Store, okay? Don't Store Army, don't come after me. I'm not attacking <laughs> you. But, yeah, I was just, like, Farang I found. And it was just, like, Farang literally means outsider. And, like, they say, it's usually said with, like, a demeaning tone. Like, oh, like, they don't belong here. Like, Farang like, get out of here. But it's, like, no, it's kind of cool because it's, like, their style of parkour, I say that, like, store is, like, kind of, like, the cool, like, we do this stuff, and, like, we're kind of, like, cool about it, whereas Parang is just, like, weird and funky, but I don't know, I kind of like that about them, because it's just, like, you know, store, it's, like, okay, I'm going to do this front flip from, like, this building to another, whereas Parang, it's, like, they set up, like, a thing where it's, like, there's a wall in the middle, and then they'll, like, bend their legs into, like, a tuck, and then their feet will, like, hit the wall, and then they'll do a front flip. <laughs> They're just, like, I did not see that coming. How do you think of this? And that's just like, yeah, I've always loved that about Farang. So they're kind of, yeah, I'm big inspiration, especially lately with like this summer. I was kind of like following a lot of what they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's very true. The store and Farang, very different. Mm-hmm, definitely. Again, right? Two different yeah. types of parkour, right? Like, exactly. You guys it was have, like, like in Jason the groups, Paul yeah. and Tasha, and then compared to like Max and Bench Cave. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like, and even like in the groups, though, like, um, like you said, like this Pasha, like he's big into like he's like just a goofy guy. He's crazy. You know? like, <laughs> he's got his style and like Jason Paul, he's got like his butt spins and like all these weird <laughs> traverses. And then Valter, he's my favorite because like I'm big oh, yeah. into like twists and spins and flips and stuff. Oh. But yeah, Valter, he's big into that stuff. And I'm just like, whoa! Like, how do you find different ways to do that? So, 
yeah, I definitely find inspiration from everyone though. And again, they all have their different style, but they all come together and it just looks so cool. So it's just cool to like, again, have that diverse kind of movement. And like, that's why jams is so much fun. Cause it's like, you go around, you do a ton of stuff, but everyone sees this thing differently. It's all like this huge world of a playground, but it's like, I see it like this. Like I could do a flip off of that and I could do like a spin and then like back full out of that. And then somebody's like, I could climb on top of that and then spin around, grab that, vault over that. Like, it's seeing the same thing, but in such different ways, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I say a lot. I'm a huge, like, I'm a parkourist, but I'm also, like, a huge parkour enthusiast, especially because on my leg, I've just been, like, looking way more into, like, the history and culture of it. So, yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's, it's wicked. It's really good to see your uh, passion and yeah, enthusiasm yeah. about this. That's that's really wicked. Um, I guess with parkour, you said this is something you really want to keep in your life. So do you do you first see yourself trying to um, pursue things like um, competing for this, like doing like some uh, NAPC things, like uh, speed skill style comps or like Red Bull, Red Bull type stuff? Or yeah, honestly, I don't. I would love to do parkour as a career, but I definitely want to, like, start a family. So I'm, like, I don't know if I could, like, do the same, like, at the same time. Because it's just, like, it's, like, it pretty much be, if I wanted to go, like, worldwide, like, Red Bull, it's kind of, like, you have to choose that pretty much as your life, I feel. But I would love to do, like, competitions. And I feel, like, up to getting my serious job, like, I mean, like, you can't really be a parkour coach and support a family, I don't think. But I'm, like, up until then, like, even through university, I love my job already, I teach parkour. I mean, not right now because my leg, but before that I was teaching parkour and then I still have the job there. So after I'll probably be teaching parkour and I just, I want to get like really good to like, yeah, point where it's kind of like my YouTube channel. It's like people are like, oh, I want to grow up to be a YouTuber and that's going to pay all my taxes. And it's just going to be like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Like, I don't want to go. Oh, like, it'd be cool to go like huge and become viral, but it's just like, I don't, that's not really my goal. My goal is just like to create a community and then just be like, recognizable like oh that's this tnc parkour they're like they're pretty cool they have a couple couple thousand subscribers and like i don't know 10k something that'd be fun but yeah it's not like i have like um a desire to make a living out of it but i think it's something mm. that i definitely want to carry with me like as a hobby for the rest of my life oh wicked so you're already set into like just the the lifestyle yeah exactly that you're in here for yeah. like, kind of the long haul Exactly, yeah. But I, I would love to do parkour competitions, though. I think that'd be super so sick, like the style competitions. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you have uh, a lot of years ahead of you. You're still really young, so I can definitely see that happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, honestly, I see, like, Ben and Tyrion, they're kind of like, they were another couple of my coaches back then, and they, um, they're a little younger. Like, Ben's, I think, just turned 20, 19 or something. And yeah, so, like, I started hanging out with him a lot this year, and just, like, his style's a little different than mine. But uh, I saw, like, them going to competitions, and I was just kind of like, man, I always thought competitions was, like, for the big people that, like, are crazy. But they actually played. So, like, they were high up in the, yeah. in the tournament. I'm like, I'd love to, like, try that sometime. Because I feel like, again, once my leg's better, I feel like I just put that effort in. I love it so much. It's not like, you know, oh, you have to practice piano. I hate practicing piano. But I'm good at piano, but I hate it. It's like, no, I get excited to train parkour. So if you're excited about something and you're able to train for something that you love, and then you have that place to kind of, like, not show it off like just like oh look at me but it's kind of like okay you get to show the world kind of like this is what i've been doing like this is exciting right. for me i would love like the idea of just like being able to do that because i feel like i'm good at what i do so yeah it'd be cool to, like to kind of show that somewhere other than that, just YouTube. that's true that's a good point hey like in training every day you can like attempt over and over <laughs> and over again but then it's like this is a competition you have right a half hour you have to do these exactly. 20 challenges yeah, yeah. yeah. right it's a, a, a very different um aspect and you don't get that unless you're like yeah. pushing yourself in your training to train like yeah, that. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it, 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 yeah but most tense. people don't <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah so i got a question um so tom and i have had the discussion uh on podcast and off podcast about uh you know where we're failing in the youth to go to the roots of yeah. parkour legends and you know teams and whatever whatnot mm. so there's a lot of youth out there that is practicing good for them that, but they don't know like anything about 
like how you just explained like parkour how is it how is it said in different places where you are and what's the meaning and you know free running and everything else like how did that how did you catch it and it, it skip over so many others yeah i guess because like a lot of people again one of the most popular phrases in like people that like say that like oh i like parkour but it's like they don't do parkour it's like do a flip do a flip and like that's <laughs> like okay it's like yeah you do a flip but it's just kind of like they see it as like oh yeah you're being flashy you're being kind of like cocky and then as soon as it's like you go to, like to teach parkour like at a place like serratus it's like okay first we have to learn how to do a vault and then you have to learn how to do a parkour roll and kids are like oh this is boring yeah. and like you know and then it's just like so many people from there it's just like okay they finish their classes and they're just like this was stupid i wanted to learn a front flip and to do like a backflip off a bar and like yeah. how to like twist like like my coach can and i'm just like no you have to like respect the process and it takes time because it's like you can all turn this into stuff but i feel like it's just like people that get into parkour it's like they get frustrated because they can't like do everything right off the bat but it's like you have to respect the process and just kind of like work up to that. So I feel like you kind of got to just get across that message to like the younger youth that it's just like, no, you won't be able to throw a double backflip 360 off of a diving board the first time you try parkour. But like if you progress up to it, it's just like, okay, you want to learn a backflip? Okay. You don't have to go through all the basics, but progress up to it, right? Like, okay, start with the backwards somersault and then kind of like use a mat and like do a back roll over that. And then you kind of make that progression. So it's just kind of like, don't just throw stuff super quick. You have to learn it a bit safely. I know it's like, oh, I learned parkour because of danger. It's like, yes, adrenaline is amazing, but you've still got to be safe about it because like me, I love parkour and I'm going to get past this injury, but if I could have avoided this, that would have been much better. So again, try to know your boundaries, be safe about it, but again, respect the process and just kind of yeah. like work up to it because I feel like, again, don't get bored because if it's not boring, it's not worth it. Or if it's boring, it's not worth it. Sorry there's yeah it's it's a there's definitely a balance to find there between over caution and really taking your time training and then getting bored exactly. right and that is yeah. one of the hardest things to like really push through to new people to parkour mm -hmm. like you got to work hard for this it's it's really fun the whole time exactly yeah it's going to take a while exactly especially like, right? when you're stuck on like one challenge it's like you can't get it just like Darn it! Like I worked all day on this. It's like no. What you should do is if you fail a challenge like five, six times, just take a break, move on to something else. It's not like that's the only thing you can do. Like that's one thing that I love about parkour is it's not like there's rules. It's not like okay, I have to complete this obstacle and then I can go to the next. But I can't go to that next one. It's not like like kung fu where it's like okay, I need to get a black belt, right? But like I'm stuck on this brown belt. Oh, I need to get this these specific challenges so I can move on to the next one. It's like no, you can do a more advanced trick in like vaulting before you get like a backflip per se, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, you can take something here and it's like, okay, I can't get this. Okay, I'm gonna like move my attention to something else. I am gonna come back to this, but I don't need to like just put it on right now. So again, one thing I love about parkour is it's a sport with no rules. Gymnastics, it's like you have to land perfectly, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm amazing, I have to land like yeah. that. And then like, I don't know. I just always thought like people that compare like, oh, you're a gymnast. And I'm like, I don't take it offensively, um, but I'm kind of like, no, because it's less about, oh, I want like the perfect form. I want to do what others want to do. Whereas it's more like, okay, I want to do what I want to do. You know, like I want a sport where there's no rules. You just get to do what you want and you're still respected for it. I love that. About it. Yeah. A little personal, form, you know? Yeah. You, you, yeah. Stick, you stick to it and, you know, stamp it or you walk away giggling or you twist it, <laughs> whatever you do. That's your little <laughs> flip, right? Everyone exactly, has it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, and failing is like half the fun, really, right? Exactly, and, like, and it's like even if you get like close, like sometimes it's fun just to see, like you put it in slow motion. It's just like you're like, okay, this trick was super cool once I got it. But one of my favorite things to watch sometimes, just like, oh wow, I really screwed that up. You can just see my face <laughs> and like utter failure. It's just like, I just even in the moment though, it's just like I remember one time I was doing like a like a wall flip off of a tree. So like I stepped in it and then I went over my back and then there was like a mom that was like, whoa, that is so cool. Do that again, please. And then I was like, okay. And I went at it and I necked myself. And I was like, oh, it hurts so bad. It was just <laughs> funny because I was just like, I can do this. 
boom and it was like oh that did not feel good but it was just kind of funny because i was just like i had like the overconfidence and i just didn't think about yeah. what i was doing because i was just like oh people are looking at me it's kind of like fun yeah. to see that honestly you know yeah. it happened to us i've seen one guy <laughs> chew, chew it hard at uh the cop in the calgary um he was just in the bowl hey he's just kicking out on his bike doing all this yeah, crazy yeah. stuff like oh. same thing this kid goes up to him and with his helmet off he goes oh can you do that thing again the guy's like no 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 he's like can you do that thing again no 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 can you do that thing again? yeah okay fine whatever so he went to go just do it quickly didn't put his helmet on just oh. shoot it oh, and it really oh, shoot. it's because when you're monkey to perform for someone calling yeah. out to you just like well that's the thing you know you know you can do it you just did it but someone's like you know it's almost like kind of like a yeah. weak challenge you know it really screws your mental case up to be like mm. i'll perform when you're parked at do a backflip you know yeah, like exactly. yeah yeah oh man you know so in those moments i i take i think Tyrion or somebody said something and it's like yeah you know like do i go up to you and like start bark or barking do an ollie or you know yeah like, exactly yeah that's true you're a swimmer swim you know <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah yeah that's the one thing about gymnastics and you know all these um extreme sports that people feel like you know they're not engaging in it because it's so cool because they can't they want you to do it over and over on their command but it's like no yeah exactly they're out of it you know i always encourage people watching on the side to come over and like you know we can do some really fun little things like build up your uh confidence and maybe exactly. come back. yeah yeah it's like even i was uh i heard this thing and it was kind of was like yeah some people like like a hype up kind of like okay yeah you can do it but sometimes you just like it becomes almost peer pressure right it's like it becomes less of like okay you, i can actually do this i'm in the right mentality whereas it just becomes like okay we're telling you to do this so you got to do it and it's just like ah right yeah. it's just kind of like it can psych you out so like like you were saying about the like the BMX thing or whatever, like I, I love BMX thing, like that's pretty cool too. But like it can just screw you up and then it can cause injuries that will mess you up for like a long time. So you just gotta be like in the right mentality. Like maybe like a quick like, okay, you can do it, but if somebody's like, nah, like just I need a second. Whoops. Oh about the training and um getting uh when you uh, Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, the peer pressure. Yeah. Hmm. If you're kinda like making that mentality, but it's just like if somebody says no, respect that. Yeah, I'm not just talking to the people that are into parkour, even the people that aren't parkour. It's like if somebody, if you say do a flip, a lot of people will just do it. That's totally cool because they feel comfortable doing that. But you know that somebody can do a flip and you're like, do a flip. And they're like, I don't feel like it right now. And then you're like, do a flip. And it's like, I really don't do a flip. And it's just like, oh, and it's just like, I don't want to punch you in the face. I'm just going to do it. But I don't, I'm, I'm just like angry. So it's just like, and it's like, it's kind of a respect thing where again, like you were saying, it's not like just swim. It's like, I don't really feel like swimming right now. Swim. You know, like it's like, no, you can't do that. Like it's gotta be like in the right time, right place, right kind of compass on. You gotta be in the right, head, right headspace too. You even saying that do a backfit three times, it sparked like some kind of instant rage in me. You know, you can feel it, right? Like Yeah, yeah. Like how many times have you fucking heard that in your life training at the gym or you know exactly, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your kin or your parents or you're on a trampoline do a backflip on a trampoline you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah did you yeah. already know well fucking don't chirp at me <laughs> I, I don't know what's worse though that or people that yell out you're gonna fall oh oh yeah. man yeah. like oh, thank you God. yeah that's what i needed to hear right now <laughs> yeah, I remember. Sorry. Make sure you get punch, punched in the face. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't know why, but that reminds me of this one time. I was like, I was in Saskatoon because that's where actually that's where Zach he used to live, like around when I was in Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. Most of my family's there, so I love to do parkour there too. But I was like doing this trick on a bridge, and I was like. This is like a like a fifty foot bridge, and then it's up in water, so like really scary. And then I was jumping from one, I was trying to jump from the outside to like the inside where there's a street. And then there was no, there was no traffic because it would like with the time it is. So I was trying to like jump over and then go into the middle of the street and then I did a corkscrew. But I was like standing on this side of the, this bridge and this guy came up and was like, no, 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 no. 
because like he thought that I was going to commit suicide by jumping <laughs> off the other side of the bridge. So he comes and he like pulls me down. Oh, and he's no. like, dude, your life is worth more, more, more than that, buddy. And he gave me like, a hug and then like left me. And I was just what? like, that's so nice. But it's oh, just, like, guy. that's what people see. They don't see like that you're actually trying to do something. <laughs> they see it as like, oh, you're going to hurt yourself. So. Yeah, you gotta be kind of clear. <laughs> like, I have yeah. never had that reaction from someone. No, yeah, that was it was pretty funny, but like I felt bad because I was like, oh man, is that what it looks like when I do this? But yeah, yeah it's like you're just gonna try a precision jump here. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't do the move after that because I was just like, I don't want to like come back. You know, yeah, it was really nice to come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never experienced that, but oh. no. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, one is don't do. It. Don't do it while you're mid stride. Mm -hmm. So another thing, Jesse was doing this huge gap in Winnipeg. Yeah. And Just as he was going through, like he's lifting off this guy beside me and Tom goes, don't do it. Oh gosh. And I'm like, <laughs> shh, shh, shh. I was recording. I was just about to light him up. I'm just, yeah. Like, Jesse, it, you I know? just remember like pointing my finger at him. I was like, <laughs> yeah yeah honestly this guy's like, insane though well how high up was that like five six stories was, yeah five up oh cadence. wait do you mean that the gap that it was like it was like that roof up here and there's like the roof that's in there and yeah ah, that, that was one. insane when that was yeah. online i was like i am friends with the legend jesse's <laughs> jesse oh shout outs to jesse he's out in uh oh, yeah. This time I heard in Bosnia. He's but, in Bosnia with Nino. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Nino. Nino have been doing yeah parkour and like oh, and they're in the mountains and shooting guns. It's crazy. <laughs> Living my life, you know. You no, know, right? So. Oh yeah. From our community, goes to Bosnia where they're from, and then <laughs> yeah. our community hops on a plane and does the whole fucking trip to wherever you know the homage is to go overseas, and then yeah. hang up, sleeping on each other's couches, blah blah blah. Yeah. It's shit, I love it. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, even I remember, uh, actually, it was on the podcast, so I don't, like, repeat too much, but I remember, like, Ben, like, he said, like, he went to Hawaii, and he was just, like, talking, like, yeah. he met people in the parkour community, he was just staying with them, and I'm like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, just, like, you barely even know these people, but it's just, like, that mutual respect that it's, like, okay, that's really cool. Yeah. People can do that, yeah. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll still find that probably most places, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely across Canada, in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I guess, speaking of Saskatoon, did you have the chance to get out to Empire? Shit. Oh man. Oh. So my buddy, my buddy, he um he worked there for a tiny little bit. His name is Daniel LeBlanc. Super nice guy. Um, oh. but he kind of like left parkour. Just kidding. um more so lately. Sorry. Not nothing. I was being funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, so me and Zach have wanted to go there for like all like every time i go to saskatoon we go to apex which is like the trampoline park which is huge we love doing that we've always wanted to go to empire and um during covid it was closed so we were trying to go and then there were like some outdoor jams that we just missed and i was like oh I wish yeah. we that. But then it opens back up and we were going to go there like we actually had this video when i just looked at my leg the first time we were making a video and we were going to call it parkour heaven we still hope to do this because we have like, a super fun idea with it i'm like it's one of those ideas, you know, like it just sparks in your head. And you're like, I'm going to do this someday. You were going to film it. And just, I just look at me like, that's the first trick we got on camera. That sucked. But yeah, so we have still this idea. And we were going to go to Empire. But because they opened, but then I hurt my leg. And I was like, no. So now I haven't been able to go yet. But wow. yeah, I talked to, I think, Tyler Harder. I think his name is. He like owns the place on uh, Instagram. And yeah, he was saying that I could definitely come to a jam or something in this summer, even if I can't do much. So, yeah. yeah, that's that's the place to go. If anyone oh, yeah. here's in Saskatoon and hasn't been, go yeah, check exactly. out Empire for sure. Yeah, definitely. Put on a very good competition too. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool there. Legends. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. You've been there and haven't been to Empire. Real I shame. Know. Real oh. shame. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Sometimes just, uh, hang out. Yeah. just go to like um to check out the gym, walk around, uh, you know, or crush around, whatever. Yeah, and, exactly. I Wah, wah. Um, but no, yeah, like, just go check it out. Get this feel and the smell of the gym and you know, even <laughs> go upstairs. And see if you can like look down like on how the layout is from like a bird's eye view or something. 
it's but definitely yeah. yeah even like when you think about it like i i go to serratus like I, I coach there and i also like do parkour there. i do a bit of training there i do training videos on their channel and everything but uh it's kind of like it's nice but i feel like it can be used for both ages but there is a lot of like stuff based on kids and stuff and like it's more like okay it's not like adults can't use it but it's kind of like very kid friendly and like very specific to like okay like we should make this safe for kids for liability and reasons and such but i see even like videos of empire and just like it kind of has like that more like adulty or even like just this kind of this more advanced kind of look to it and it's just like at serratus like everything's kind of like painted and it's all like kind of cheery and stuff and i'm like that's kind of like i like it i like colorfulness but like it's kind of cool to see like the authentic wood and like bar sets that kind of go like from the side on a weird angle to like this wall i think that's really cool <laughs> yeah also when you go to the jam there's some really sick spots yeah and, uh, oh there's a to get out there again. oh there, and then the walk along there oh there's just a, a dream of going back actually what to river oh it was so good <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, wait. River landing? Is that what you're talking oh, about, Christy? Yeah. 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 That, that, oh, okay. That's the tune there. Yeah, because yeah. me and Zach, oh man, we filmed the video there like three years ago or two years ago. Oh, really? We actually, it was so bad. Like, not that the video <laughs> itself is bad, but just I was bad at parkour at the time. Oh. So it's just like Zach hated on this video for so long. We made a redemption. <laughs> we actually went back and like, we didn't recreate the video, but like, we made like the video was called Parkour in Saskatoon. We literally made a video on our channel recently called Parkour in Saskatoon, but way better. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah River Landing is a sick place. There's so it many is. great places across the oh. river. And, yeah, it's really cool. I was there's some choice places. Yeah. When you're doing your YouTube videos, um, how like how do you think of what you're gonna do? Like your ideas. What kind of stuff interests you that makes you want to make a video of it? Yeah, kind of like what I like to do is, again, I take a lot of inspiration from like Farang. I feel like for me, I've seen like there's different styles of parkour videos. Like some of them are very like vloggy. They're very um, repetitive where like this just, it shows kind of like, okay, we're gonna do this trick like 16 times trying to get it. And then it's like, we get it. And it's like, it's all hype and excited. I don't know. That's not really my thing, right? I see gym videos and it's like, okay, I like, to be in the gym but it's not really fun to have on a video i feel because it's just like okay you're set in like a like a very set environment right because mm. it's like yes you can move stuff around in the gym but it's just kind of like okay you're just using this space over and over and over again which isn't bad but like what i find is really cool is again taking your environment and then kind of using that so like when zach and i did this last video like with parkland saskatoon but better it's um we we had this idea and we had like a few places that we wanted to go we didn't have like a specific like okay we want to do this jump from here to here we want to do like this kong pre onto this like it's just like no we knew the places that i thought would be cool to do parkour but i'd never been there before like even though i was right. in for a long time i was just kind of like let's go to these places whatever comes to our mind let's film it and then it's just kind of like when you have that kind of like spontaneous creativity i feel like it gets really cool and it comes together really well and then just to like throw together this like mix of things it's kind of cool because if everything lines up so perfectly it kind of looks like almost fake and it's just kind of like okay this is so bland this is so lame yeah. whereas if it's like yeah you're doing like some weird thing off of this and you're throwing yourself off that and coming up on you and it's just like okay that's cool because it's just kind of like it's clashing but it's just kind of like parkour it's like again like i was saying gymnastics it's all form right no whereas parkour it's very like rugged and kind of like you're just like throwing yourself at things which i love because it's just like it's kind of has like clashing kind of weird vibe to it but then you kind of like film it like that and it works really well yeah amazing i think that's that's good it's like it'll capture parkour but yeah like it's... nothing against gym videos like in gym training mm -hmm. awesome there's been some amazing videos done in gyms but yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah. For sure. yeah outdoor yeah. stuff so a little more raw maybe <laughs> exactly i like the raw raw concrete kind of yeah I yeah to, no. yeah it's not gonna move on you. Christy, did you have a question there before? I think I cut you off. <laughs> no, I think it was the exact same thing that you said, actually. Okay. Yeah. It was uh, the same thing. Uh, yes, that was. Sweet. Well, um, we're coming up on 
even with uh, edits here for everyone listening, we're still coming up on close to an hour on our hour. Why don't we? Um, you know, should we get into like top fives? Yeah. Should we do it? <laughs> top fives. All right. So yeah, start us off here. <laughs> um. Okay. So d- 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 top five people uh, that you follow and or has inspired you. Now you didn't mention Team Barang, Fer- but like, uh, can you expand on that? And it's no particular order. Like, like you're yeah, not playing no favorite. Anyone. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when I think of like the top five people that have kind of inspired me, I mean, again, I don't know if you count Zach because he's literally like my friend, but like, again, he, he does inspire me just like being there with me. Um, so I'd say he's definitely one of them. Um, actually, Ben. Uh, he used to be like a coach of mine. Now me and Ben are like really close friends. But um, yeah, so he was kind of like the first person that like, again, in the community, I, like I saw him at the gym mm-hmm. in the summer and then we started like hanging out and going out. Um, yeah, so Ben was like kind of the first guy because like I, I went to the parkour gym, but then he was also the first guy. We went out one-on-one and we just like went around the city to like, again, nowhere. We didn't have an idea of like where we were going. We were just kind of like, okay, like let's check out this spot. Let's check out this spot. We kind of went back and forth and we just exchanged ideas. So that was really cool. Um, and then when it kind of gets to the more the professional here, again, from Farang, they kind of have like a few different members. I really like Valtteri, like I was saying, he's big into like twists and spins and stuff. And they've got tutorials on YouTube. But again, I just love his funky style, kind of like being different than everyone else. I think that that's really cool. Um, then there's uh, Anan Anwar. He's again, he's uh, more of a, like an editing guy, which I think is cool because like he edits for like Team Farang, but he also does some parkour himself. And again, yeah. he's kind of just like a goof. And I feel like in my videos, I like to have fun too. Like some of the clips, like most of the clips are doing parkour. But like some of the clips, like I'll be like dancing around and just like laughing. I'll be like, whoa, like what's going on? And like we just love to like throw it in there. So like that was a huge inspiration. Just kind of like, again, the culture of just like being able to like goof off and sort of be like all serious and like all for it in the sport. And then um, I think another really cool thing is Jason Paul. He's another yeah. member of Team Ferrang. He's, um, what I find really cool about him is that he's able to balance a family life, whereas mm-hmm. also hanging out with his buddies. Because, um, yeah, he was doing parkour for a while. He took a little break when he had, he had a kid, or he has two kids now, I think. But, really? uh, oh, yeah, God. or at least, at least one for sure. I'm not yeah. sure if he had two. That's but. What I know about, but whatever. Who knows? Yeah, people do yeah. Things. But, yeah, so he did that, like, for a little bit. Like, he still went back. And, like, they had a, they had a video really, released recently. It was called, like, Resurrection. And it was, like, super cool. Oh, a dumb tomato. He was, yeah, he's also part of it, and I love him too. But yeah, he was just like acting all goofy, like calling them with like this stupid whistle or whatever. But like, yeah, you just see that, like, yeah, you can balance a good family life with still doing parkour. And like, that's something that I want to do. So that's a huge inspiration for me, for sure. Right on. Yeah. So the flip question to that is I'll go for it. Uh, five. Yeah. Top- places that uh you want to train or that you love training at oh man okay one i know. i sorry go for it yeah i was gonna say one i i like serious because it's kind of just like it was the first time i'd ever like had that approach to like parkour like the gym itself so that's definitely kind of like my home gym and like the way i work there i do like training there because it's just like you always want that place that you're really comfortable with you know like that place that it's just kind of like i know everything about it I can just train there and I know what I'm going to do kind of thing. Um, Empire, I would really like to visit. I think that'd be absolutely awesome to see. Um, uh, I really want to try to do parkour in like Italy or Japan, something that has like a very different culture to uh, Canada because like Italy, it kind of has like that more like old, but kind of like cool fashion to it. Again, there's like lots of river and canals, but also like a bunch of like weird shaped buildings and roofs and stuff that I just think would be awesome. And Japan, again, opposite, kind of, like, has that, like, newer kind of aspect to mm. it. Because it's a very, like, Tokyo, I say, is, like, a very modern city. And it's, like, it's very yeah. full and bustling. But there's so much in there that I'm just, like, there's so much you could do with that. Um, and then, yeah, I guess just from, like, watching videos and stuff, I really think it would be cool to check out, say, either Russia or Paris, where, like, I feel like parkour originated more so. Especially Paris, I guess, was where it originated. But it also yeah. got big in Russia. Just because, like, to see where it originated and meet, like, the community around there, I think that'd be really cool to kind of, like, have that history kind of aspect behind it all. Oh, yeah. I love that you in your, your, um, your history of parkour. You're naming all the yeah, top spots. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like for me, it's again, my life, like I said, I'm a, I'm a parkourist, but I'm also a huge enthusiast. And this has encouraged more like history and like more to like look into the insight more so than just the sport itself. I think the same thing happened to me. Like I separated yeah. my shoulder. And I think I just oh. dove into the culture and I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. it like people are like, well, now that you've moved, are you going to be still doing parkour? I'm like, um, oh, just because of a move doesn't mean I'm going to stop. Like, yeah. oh, I moved to BC. Yeah, I'm just lazy now. I, I can't know. do this anymore. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, if anything, you're more access to parkour yeah, yeah. spots. <laughs> I love BC. Honestly, I got some friends out there. Not really parkour buddies, but like I have a really close friend out there. And there's, there's definitely like down in Vancouver, there's a lot of cool spots there. And I've heard of uh, Origins Parkour. I haven't seen much of it, that's, but like, there's, that's like everyone's got everyone yeah. has to go to Origins. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's definitely yeah, another cool place going. Shout out for this adventure park um, in Langley. It's on 200th Street. It might be, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, 200th Ave, 200th, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it's just, it's a lit outdoor parkour in park. I, I oh, encourage outdoor. everyone to encourage everyone to check it out and it's it's big too like it's it's for there's big gaps there's big bars you know it's not just the little tiny stuff like it's really interesting at plus so yeah check that out if you ever come out to bc we'll go check it out or tell your friend or whatever. <laughs> yeah for sure yeah i should like, visit sometime i could like chill out you for a bit and uh we could check out some of the spots the all right yeah. heading up okay. to the last one oh, this is you yeah, uh, it's too bad. I was kind of hoping Zach would pop in and like right yeah, now. Yeah, give, give me one you. second. I'll give you like <laughs> two minutes here. I'm going to call him really quick to see if you can. Oh, they say hi. Hey. Zach says hi. Hey. hey, Zach. Even if he's not able to get on, you should like keep this part not cut. <laughs> because like, <laughs> he gets to be in here for a second. Have you on for another time? Can, can, can the call hear me? Uh, yeah. I think so. Can you hear yeah, yeah. yeah, I can hear you. If you put it on speaker, maybe we'll just do it that way. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess if you just leave it here. Okay, so Zach will be here in spirit then. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just have to unplug my headphones here. Yeah. Okay. How's that sound? Hello. Uh, yeah, I, I can hear you. All right. Oh, okay, cool. I can hear you too. That's great. Okay, cool. Well, we're wrapping up here. So our last thing that we always ask our guests, which for everyone listening now, we have uh, Zach. That's the yeah. Z, or the Z and T and Z. Yeah. Um, we always ask for people's sage advice. So just any piece of advice you give to people, uh, either getting into parkour or been, could maybe doing parkour for a long time, like yeah. what's something you think would be the most helpful for people to hear? Um, okay. This is, I'm actually making a video or planning to make a video about this. So one, awesome. I think, but this is more for like people that want to become great at parkour. I find one of the, the most helpful things is like really just experimenting on uh, just like uh, like I'm making a video right now. It's going to jump jump your parkour. The main message of that right now is that to like fully master a trick, you have to be almost able to do it on any, you have to be super comfortable with it. To do that, you kind of want to do it on like just rocks you want to do it kind of outside everywhere and uh that gives you just the ability to just do it um anywhere that you need to and um that makes i don't know it's it's going to do with like brain stuff and muscle stuff you just naturally get good at it but uh you like I'm, i'm trying to find an example for it um so like let's say you do it off of a, a lower uh, rock or a higher rock you kind of just learn how to control your depth and your your height and ability. And I think to learn that in every single trick that you do, I think that's really what's going to take you from um, beginner or amateur to professional. For that's sure. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that adaptability. That was really well said. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you heard all of that. Yeah. Yeah, we. That was, that was, okay. that was right. awesome. Can I, can we get a two for here? Is Ty, do you have anything uh, to add? Yeah, <laughs> um, I guess um, when it comes to me, kind of like 
in, sorry, what was the question? Inspiration to? Just to any advice. Any advice. Um, I'd say, yeah, for anyone watching, just like, again, Zach kind of taught me this one. He kind of uh, made a video like on his old channel and then he kind of like made like kind of a redo on ours based around parkour. But it's kind of like, yeah, trying to do something 15 minutes a day. Kind of like getting it into like a regular schedule. It shouldn't just be like, if you want to get serious about parkour, it shouldn't just be like, oh yeah, something I do from time to time. Like I'll go to a gym like once every couple of weeks, maybe once a month. Like, no, if you even have spend just like a little time every day working on things a bit, just if it spins, if it's like a couple flips a day, just like continuing to do it every single day, making something consistent, having a routine with it is really important to kind of making that. And uh, yeah, kind of making it a habit, not just like a thing that you just do. It's kind of like, yeah, it's just like, it's just part of your life on this. I think that's something that I don't know. Yeah, for I sure. Agree. That, that's a hard thing to do. It is. It takes some discipline, but it's not something If you can't do it at home, then just do it like while you're uh, working or something, right? You do like uh, precisions, right? Make it a part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like spending a little bit of time just doing something small. Did, uh, Zach, did Zach have something to say there? Sorry? Did uh, Zach have something? Uh, I, I was just, I think it, it kind of cuts out every once in a while. Um, but I was just saying um, uh, it is challenging to try to get that into a schedule. And that's pretty much where the 15 minutes a day comes in. It's just it's 15 minutes of just trying to get you into the mental state of incorporating it into the routine, which is important. Um, that's all I was saying. I love that. Right on. Okay, guys. Well, you both of you hang on, but I want to say goodbye to everyone listening. Um, if they want to follow you, where should they reach you guys at? Oh, you can check out um, Zach's Instagram at uh, Zach. Who is? Yeah. I forget. Oh, oh it's um, it's it's really just I think Zach Rico J forty five. Yeah, and then you can follow me at Ty R Free Run. Um, and then uh, our YouTube channel is T N Z Parkour and Blogs, like Ty and Zach, not T N. It's T A N D. That's my <laughs> life. So yeah, check us out there. All right, cool. I'll include those in uh, the description or the links below or wherever Sweet. you're listening or watching this from. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be you guys links. are watching this on T N Z because we might post like a version of it there. We will put ah. uh, stage movement in the description. <laughs> Wicked case. Well, I've been. Uh, this has been really fun. We'll have to have uh, both of you uh, back on. Yeah, I can't wait. Maybe Zach will be actually be able to pop on next time. With that just your phone. Wicked. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thanks for having us.